you, Mr. Radio Personality, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I don't believe you didn't know anyone. I don't believe you. But what I am going to say is, you know, New York, Jersey, Connecticut, I wouldn't condemn somebody. A situation can happen. Something can happen. Things happen. And I'm not just saying things happen loosely and generically. I'm just saying maybe a mistake was made early on in life. And I get it. I don't like it. I don't understand it. Right? So this situation happens. It's a bigger charge. You put it out to a lesser case. You're young. I get it. Um, the part I'm going to share with you, New York, because I'm going to tell you something. I really don't need to say your name because I'm going to tell you why. I don't care if everyone knows. I want you to know. Where this goes left is you continuously, let me take this, turn the music down. This goes left because you continuously stand on that podcast and stand every time you get to try to normalize. You try to normalize it every chance that you get that it's okay to put pills in a woman's drink, you talk about it all the time, that it's okay, or it happens, or because you're young, to put drugs in a woman's drink and have sex with her while she's incoherent. You talk about it all the time. That's what makes you a nasty creep. Not because of the situation you had, because I'm going to tell you something. I wasn't there, and I don't know what happened. But every chance you get. You know, New York, this guy stood on a podcast. And he talked about spring break and meeting a young lady. Putting something in her drink and then having sex with her when she was incoherent, laughing about it. That's the, you know, bruh, nobody wants you to get fired or to lose your situation. Nobody, nobody's like, man, the fact that you try to normalize that that's okay, that that's good. Like it's things that, that men do. That's not what men do. That's what you do. You do it. I'm going to tell you the most terrible thing about you, bruh, because I watch you on that podcast and you sit next to a guy, that guy you sit next to on your podcast doesn't care about our culture. He doesn't care about your culture, but you sit there and you laugh with him about raping women. You, you think it's funny. You know what else is funny, my brother? Because I'm, I'm staying on my, my stone today of where I'm at. And I'm going to tell you where I'm at. I am not at what you did 20 years ago. I'm at what you did in the last couple years and how you talk about it and how you, how you say about it. You, you piece of... You tweeted that R. Kelly, that sex video was one of the greatest celebrity videos you've ever watched. That video was with a 14-year-old. But you thought it was a great video. You tell on yourself constantly you're a weirdo. I don't care if nobody else checks you. I'm going to check you. You're nasty and you're a weirdo. And you always want to talk on a you want always wanna talk on a podcast about taking advantage of women when they're unconscious. What type of dude are you? Why is that cool to you? 
Why is that cool as you stand next to that clown, that guy that doesn't care about our culture and continuously talk about raping women? You always use the word rape, how you raped your wife. You love to use that word, bro. You get mad at Kwame Brown for using it. You use it. You use the word. You don't think it's funny, my brother. I don't care about saying your name. Let me tell you something. I don't care about cease and desist. You know why? You want to send out cease and desist to people because you want the clarification of what you did said properly. The fact that you don't see that's bananas, I'm not sure if it's the people around you or if you want to continue. Maybe you want to continue being who you are. For some reason, your name is being said with a 15-year-old. I'm not sure why that's happening. You refer to your dudes. Every girl that has a problem, it's the dudes around you. The dudes are with the girls. My dudes. You say it's your dudes. I don't understand that part, bro. That's the part that people aren't really grasping. That's why people keep hammering you. It's not for what you did 20 years ago. You can be sorry for that. You can. It's, it's the way you're moving forward, bro. Let me tell you something. You said that the R. Kelly video is the greatest video you've ever seen. You tweeted that. And you know how that came out? Because you had the nerve to go on an R. Kelly documentary to talk about a pedophile. You're a pedophile. You're a pedophile. You. Is it okay if R. Kelly is in the video with your kids? Is it still a great video? You nasty. Is that a good video? Is it? You don't have to answer. I'm going to tell you honestly, it's better you don't. You shouldn't. You should never, ever answer this. You should always keep a cease and desist, and you should never, ever talk about it because we already know what you are. You are one of them slimy, greasy dudes that used to be in our neighborhood that don't talk much, that likes to put medication in women's drinks. And get on top of them. That's you. We know what you are. I know what you are. I do not care if I ever say your name. I want you to know that I know what you are. 